I'm Nancy Howell, and I'm the compiler for the Lakewood Christmas Bird Count. We just completed our Christmas Bird Count at the end of December, and it was fantastic. Uh, now, maybe you don't know what a Christmas Bird Count is all about. Um, there's been 116 years of data that have been collected uh, for Christmas Bird Counts. Certainly not on our Lakewood Count, but um, it has gone back 116 years, and some of the earliest counts at least one of them was in Oberlin, Ohio. Um, what the count started off as was the great Christmas bird hunt, where people would go out in the early 1900s, shoot birds, other animals, more than likely to eat. But then Frank Chapman said, let's do a census instead. So uh, again, for 116 years, people have been going out in a count circle of about uh, 15 miles radius around a certain point and the Christmas bird count in Lakewood, we uh, just finished with 68 species. Uh, 63 species were sighted on count day, and five species were seen on count week. We had 74 participants this year. A lot of our area uh, encompasses Lake Erie, so the shoreline of Lake Erie. We get a lot of waterfowl. We have people watching bird feeders. We have people walking in of some of the parks around us. So we did pretty well this year, but one of the major things with Christmas bird counts is not just counting the species and the numbers of birds, but also really getting a good idea as to what the, the uh, weather is, uh, what kind of fruits and seeds and berries are available, because all of that can make a real impact on the species that are around. With a lot of data, people and scientists can take that information and say, well, let's look at this long term and see how many uh, of a particular species have been, maybe their numbers are growing because of the weather situations, maybe getting warmer. Uh, maybe the food supply is getting better uh, for some species. Uh, other species, maybe their numbers are not doing as well. So Christmas bird counts are incredibly useful. Again, long-term data, looking at species, looking at numbers, looking at the changes in habitats, and within the environment for, a, uh, again, a long, long time. So what I'd like to do now is kind of just give you a little overview as to our report. Uh, we had, like I say, 74 people out in the field bringing back their data, and some of the, it, the data was very, very interesting. This year, with Lake Erie wide open, no ice to concentrate any of the waterfowl, the numbers of waterfowl and species of waterfowl were really, really low. Uh, we only had one duck called a redhead. We only had one duck called a lesser, or a, I'm sorry, a greater skull. That's unheard of. Normally we get hundreds. Um, the number of red-breasted mergansers was way down. We normally get 12, 15, 20,000 birds. This year, just barely over 4,000. So again, why? This is really what this data is going to help provide. Um, now, we had some very good highlights, too, uh, and, and things that were really good. Um, somebody on during count week had a gray catbird, which is a, an, an insect eater. So you wouldn't have really imagine an insect eater uh, around during the winter time. Highlights, we had um, a number of gulls. Again, the numbers were not huge because everything was really scattered on the lake but great black-backed gulls and lesser black-backed gulls were two of the species that were kind of highlights for our, our area. Um, the number of hawks and raptors was, again, pretty typical. Bald eagle, that's becoming almost a dime a dozen. Isn't that great to hear? 10, 12 years ago, bald eagles were really, really hard to find. But nowadays, if we don't get a bald eagle or two or six, uh, then we're really worried about that. Peregrine falcon, same way. We're getting them every year on the Christmas count. Now, another, the, the nocturnal raptors, the, the owls, we had a little harder time this year. I don't think they wanted to get wet because our weather was kind of wet this year. Uh, only one barred owl was, was obtained. Uh, we did have a great horned owl that was uh, heard, uh, but that was during count week, not on count day. So again, we see these ups and downs in populations for one year. So looking long term is a much, much better way to look at this data. Um, 
couple of other things that were fun. We had uh, a good number of smaller songbirds. A uh, small, small songbird called the winter wren. Much smaller than a sparrow, not much bigger than a hummingbird, believe it or not. Little tiny bird around during the winter time. Um, we had Carolina wren. Their numbers again have fluctuated uh, in, the, in the winter. If it's a really harsh winter, sometimes their numbers really plummet because again, being an insect eater, yes they will come to feeders, but being primarily an insect eater, they, they don't do well if it's a really harsh winter. But we had a few this winter, which is nice. Uh, bluebirds, always good to have. And surprisingly, a lot of American robins. Again, mild winter. The birds are able to forage on the ground for insects and invertebrates. But one of the things they favor at this time of the year are the uh, berries and fruits on trees. So uh, the American robin number was, was way up there. A couple of things towards the end, we had um, uh, red-winged blackbird, common grackle, and brown-headed cowbird. Those are three blackbirds that normally don't hang around in the wintertime in this area. But again, a mild winter, they're here. So we're, we're really finding these fluctuations, these ups and downs, and this is good, good, good data. Again, we just really can't thank our, our uh, volunteers and the people who participated who went out in all these different areas. Really, they deserve the thanks to find all these species, to brave the weather, and to get their data in. We really thank them. We hope that you enjoyed the, our little wrap-up of the information that we presented, uh, but we'd like to hear from you as well. We'd love to have your comments on maybe a count that you've participated in, or maybe feeders that you're watching. So a real easy way to do that is to check our website. And with Western Cuyahoga, it's simply wcaudubon.org. Audubon spelled A-U-D-U-B-O-N. And you can look up the information that I presented. You can look up uh, more information on our, uh, on our uh, organization. And, and become a member as well, too, because we'd love to have you as a member. We'd love to have you as a participant, whether it's in a Christmas bird count, our programs, our field trips. We have so much going on, and we'd love to have you.